He is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us take this time to gather together in virtual community for a time of scripture, a time of prayer, a time when we can gather together in this struggle together, which has been our theme, which comes from Philippians 1, verse 30, when we're talking about the fact that we are in a struggle together, Christianity, COVID-19, or just our daily living. So today our lectionary reading uh, comes from a letter from the uh, uh, disciple Paul as he is in prison and in chains. So hear these words as read by Reverend Ann. Colossians 4, 2 through 5. Keep on praying and guard your prayers with thanksgiving. At the same time, Pray for us also. Pray that God would open a door for the word so we could preach the secret plan of Christ, which is why I'm in chains. Pray that I might be able to make it as clear as I ought to when I preach. Act wisely toward outsiders, making the most of the opportunity. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our time together today, as we look at, think about this scripture from Colossians that Paul writes from isolation, writes from a prison cell while in chains, asking for his church, his congregation, his people to keep praying so that they may spread the good word, that they may continue to love and to live like he had taught them. While I am not in chains, these are uh, my words and my hopes today, that you may continue to pray not only for me, but for yourselves, for our community and our world. As we deal with this uh, COVID-19, as we deal with isolation, as we deal with this time of uh, separation, these days are tough. Many of us feel as if we're in prison or something along that line, as if we're chained to our homes. But through Christ, we can feel the freedom of knowing that we are loved, that we are forgiven, that we have been redeemed, and that through this, we can continue to love and to be a part of God's world, even if it's in our own homes, praying for people that we barely know, but still lifting up God's word. So today, as we come to our uh, time of prayer, as we continue to uh, think about what it means uh, to be together, uh, hear, hear what's going on right now in our world around us. Anne? We are in um, such a turbulent time, a frightening time. And as we in our state are reaching our peak or nearing our peak, it is noticeable. Um, since yesterday, we have had 60 people who now have died in Iowa. There are now over 2,100 cases, people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. There are also um, an increase every day of over 100 people. Yesterday was 146. Our county has 148 people who now have been diagnosed. We want to be in prayer for them and for their families. And then also, we want to be in prayer for our country, Again, we are the nation, the one nation in the world that has the most cases and the most deaths. We have 641,000 people who are struggling with this virus. 31,590 have died. In the world now, there are 2.1 million people who have this virus. And there have been 140,000 deaths. In our state, we continue to lift up um, all those who are hospitalized, not just our state, of course, but around the world. But our state, we have 175 people who are in hospitals, um, 48 who are on ventilators. And we want to be uh, thinking of them and thinking of the caregivers and all of those who are dealing with this. We also have particular prayers for Wilton, our retirement community here at Wilton, is one of the outbreaks in the state of Iowa. There are now have been 
nine long-term care outbreaks and Wilton Retirement Community is one of those. And there are nine people now who have been diagnosed with the virus. So be in prayer, be hopeful, trust in God. Amen. And of that, that nine that are uh, here in Wilton, it's not just residents, that includes the staff numbers. Um, so keep all of them in your prayers. That I'm sure that we all know somebody who has now uh, been a victim uh, and is suffering and who has to deal with the recovery and uh, that time of even more isolation. As we continue to uh, lift up uh, prayers today, we just want to continue to lift up uh, Maggie and her family as she continues to recover. Uh, continue uh, with those dealing with the aftermath of the tornadoes. Uh, I would, uh, we all are in isolation and, and hunkering down and so forth, but uh, they're talking about two to four inches of snow this afternoon, this evening here. Uh, so stay safe, stay warm um, along with that. Uh, we also know that there are, uh, there's a possibility of another outbreak at another meatpacking plant in Waterloo, and uh, which reminds us to keep all of those people whose employment has been affected by uh, the pandemic, who are dealing with uh, this issues of lower income, lower employment, dealing with uh, the world around them in a way that they're unused to. Uh, food shortages, uh, supply shortages. Uh, keep all those people in your prayers. Keep those who are dealing with the anxiety, the fear, the depression uh, in your prayers also. Our police department and our fire department, our EMTs, who are out there dealing with not just uh, those that are ill, but those that are dealing with the uh, issues that go with the fact that we're all uh, in this uh, situation. Uh, the increase in abuse and uh, neglect, those, uh, I'm sure there's a, a rise in addictions, whether uh, we are seeing that on the forefront or whether that's one of those things behind doors. Uh, keep the doctors and nurses, of course, in your prayers. But we want to also think about those people around the world, like the muffers who are in uh, Africa, as it has been increasing and they deal with the birthing center there. Um, our friends uh, that we have supported in Palestine and Bethlehem, uh, in the holy city there, as they continue to deal with um, shutdowns and isolations. And uh, it's just a hard thing all over the world. So at this time, let us come together in a time of, uh, of prayer and a time of uh, discernment. Lord, I ask that you help us to continue to uh, live and to love together, to allow us to uh, realize that we are your people and that you are our Savior, that you are there for us, that you go ahead of us, that you are thinking of us, you are caring for us, that you are helping us to do what we need to do to keep ourselves safe. Lord, I ask that you be with members of this church who are dealing with COVID-19 on a very personal basis, to be with our retirement center as they struggle to stay safe and to stay healthy. Lord, those are anxious times, anxious times for their families watching from the outside, anxious times for the staff trying to work so diligently with them on the inside. Lord, I ask that you be with our church our conference, our denomination, as we deal with new issues, new ways of doing things, looking at new ways of worshiping, new ways of communicating, new ways of meeting. Lord, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit on all those who are listening, those that are watching, those who do this in real time and listen to it afterwards, that you may allow their souls to feel your presence, you may fill them with a little bit of more love, a little bit more caring, a little bit more compassion. Lord, and settle their fears. Allow them to be a non-anxious presence in their family. Allow that to be part of their witness of you in their lives. Lord, be with us. Help us to proclaim your good news, even in the midst of of what feels like daily bad news. For through you, you are our light. You are our hope. You are our life. And through you, we will get through all of this. So Lord, I thank you 
and praise you for all that you've done, all that you'll be doing, and all that is yet to come. So Lord, as we come to you, we thank you for this. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. As we come to our close today, I would remind you that if, if you would like to give, um, send a letter to somebody at the care center or our shut-ins that are uh, out there or even the ones that are in Davenport and you would like a list of their names and their addresses, uh, email me, uh, send me a message and I'll send that off to you. I've already done that for several. And uh, it's such a wonderful um, way as you uh, sit around the house, uh, if you have a spare moment, a way that you can share a little bit of God's love. I would also ask that you continue to listen uh, for the bell. I know uh, somebody pulled up and parked in their car and watched me ring the bell today. I couldn't tell who they were through the glass window, but I waved and they, I could see a hand wave back at me. And uh, it's nice to have that ex the mutual experience. I did hear from on an online message that uh, they can hear the bell ringing at the retirement center and uh, and that, that is, that's a good feeling to know that they can hear that ringing prayer. Uh, one for the victims, but you know, they're also part of that uh, uh, rung prayer that we do every day at noon. So may you stay safe. May you continue to pray. May you continue to do acts of kindness and love throughout this world. So may the peace be with you. Peace be with you. Amen.